Mr. Bikin for his five minutes question. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to the witnesses uh, for being here, especially you've got uh, somebody that traveled all the way from Oklahoma to be here. Um, I just want to uh, reiterate after the break, uh, just for the American people to know, you know, it's important that we follow the rule of law. Uh, I, I love, you know, commonly said now, to be the rule of law team, um, it requires discipline. It requires focus. It requires that, you know, we don't turn ourselves into a banana republic. Article 2, Section 4 says the president, vice president, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. The Constitution absolutely uh, gives authority to impeach and remove the president, vice president, and all civil officers for treason, bribery, high crimes, and misdemeanors. This tool was inherited from English practice in which Parliament impeached and convicted ministers and, favor, and favorites of the crown in a, in a struggle to rein in abuse of power. That's the historical precedent on this. And let me back that up, okay? So it's been talked about this morning. Uh, Federalist 65 has some admonitions, has some warnings, and it says the subjects within the context of impeachment, in Federalist 65, written by Alexander Hamilton, it says the subjects of its jurisdiction, talking about impeachment, are those offenses in which proceed from the misconduct of public men, or in other words, from the abuse or violation of some public trust. It goes on to say that the model from which the instrument of impeachment the idea of this institution has been borrowed, pointed out that course to be the convention. In Great Britain, it is the province of the House of Commons to prefer the impeachment and the House of Lords to decide upon it. Two part, just like we've employed in our constitution. Several of the state constitutions have followed this example, as well as the latter as the former seem to have regarded the practice of impeachment as the bridle in the hands of the legislative body upon the executive servants of government. You know why I love that? I grew up in the performance horse industry, and uh, I learned three stage stops from a father who trained cutting horses professionally. You sit down, they feel the pressure of that. Then you say, whoa, and then they, a well-trained, well-disciplined animal learns that when they feel the, the three stage stop coming, they're gonna park it without having to lift the four ounces of the reins of the bridle. The problem is we've got men and, and women who serve in positions of authority, and they, the definition, according to AQHA, of a reining horse, I love this, is, is willfully guided, willfully controlled. The problem is when you have men and women in influence who aren't willfully guided and willfully controlled by the Constitution, the Constitution, and, and as stated by Alexander Hamilton, the job of the, of the legislative body is to grab the reins and say, whoa. And we have an out of, um, out of place, out of their floodplain bureaucracy within Homeland Security that is doing what they want to, not following the, the, the rule of law. So with that said, the question is before us. Are there instances of fact where Mayorkas has flippantly disregarded the laws enacted by Congress? Point one, parole. Section 212D5A of the Immigration Nationality Act says parole shall only be granted on a case-by-case -case basis, only for urgent humanitarian reasons or significant public benefit. Mayorkas has not done that. He's created broad parole programs for 30,000 aliens per month, Cuba, um, Haiti, Nicaragua, and in Venezuela without evidence of humanitarian reasons or without significant public benefit. Point two, resources in FY 2020, Congress explicitly appropriated funds for constructions of barrier systems, which our AG has, has talked about from Missouri. Part of your lawsuit was over this. Barrier systems along the southwest border. My workers refused to comply with Congress's appropriation, refused to build barrier systems, as, as Congress said, as a will of the people, the power of the purse. Point three, detention. Section 235B1 of the Immigration Nationality Act outlines the procedures by which aliens attempting to enter the United States without a visa or proper immigration papers are to be detained and removed. My workers has not done this. His agency has released several million illegal aliens who should have been detained and deported. Question. Mr. Bowman, you've been invited by the Democrats to, to, to provide your uh, you know, advice as a professor. Um, and you said that the impeachment of my workers needs to be based on not policy differences, but it has to be, quote, has to be subversion of the Constitution, another quote from you, for illegal, in, illegal ends or serious offenses. Is that correct? Yes or no? That you said those statements. Has to be subversion of the Constitution for illegal ends or serious offenses, yes or no? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Uh, you're speaking rather. You've said it, I, it's on record. I need to kind of watch my time and move on through this. To, my, to, the call, to the attorney generals in the room, is not administering the laws of the land 
a serious offense illegal, for illegal ends, does it rise to the level of high crimes and misdemeanors? Please, each of you, please answer that question. Absolutely, Congressman. It does rise. Unequivocally, yes. We've got three attorney generals who say that the violation of these laws is a violation of the enforcement of the law and is grounds of high crimes and misdemeanors, which the Constitution clearly lays out, is high crimes and misdemeanors is a, is a reason for impeachment. What we tolerate, we empower. Congress has to do its job and send a strong signal. If you don't follow the law, you're gonna be out. Thank you.